there's a cartoon that made the rounds uh, upon Stephen Hawking's passing just a few days ago, uh, which shows him in his, or his body in his wheelchair, but his spirit now fully abled, walking off into infinity. Not many, but some people took offense to this and said that that was um, ableism, in that the implication is that he's now a full human being, and he wasn't one when he was occupying his own body. Um, okay, I thought that was a pretty absurd thing to say, but it didn't particularly make me angry. I, I understand that kind of mindset that says that um, um, disabled people are just as fully human as anyone else, and I tend to agree with it. But where I kind of draw the line is when you sort of say that any improvement of this person's lot is ableist, is, um, I don't know, somehow discriminatory. It's implying that he was less of a man when he was alive than he is now that he's dead uh, because of his disability. Now, take that debate as you will. I'm not getting into it. I really don't care. But <clears throat> it points out an interesting mindset here about what privilege means. Now, we hear about white privilege a lot. That's the one that you know, makes the rounds most. But um, you know, there's any number of privileges. There's Western privilege. You know, they always say that you come at such and such an issue from a position of privilege. All right, let's just take that and apply it to, say, Stephen Hawking. Now, I'm an able-bodied human being. All my limbs work. I can walk, run, everything. Um, <clears throat> Stephen Hawking can't. Is Stephen Hawking, in all things, my equal? If the answer is yes, then he doesn't deserve any special consideration. If the answer is no, when he's not my equal, what do you mean by that, that he's not my equal? Um, he's obviously, intellectually, my, he makes me look like a minnow, but then again, a lot of people have that. <laughs> they manage to do that to me. But, um, <clears throat> you know, let's say physically, when he was alive, was he my equal? No, he wasn't, I guess. I presume that most people would say that. Instead, although I wouldn't really go so far as to say equal, but is he on the same level here? Is he on the same playing field as me? Um, I think most people would agree, no, I can walk upstairs. He can't, or he couldn't. Um, <clears throat> now, how do we define that discrepancy between the two of us? Do we say he is disabled? Does he, is he in some sort of deficit, or am I in a position of privilege? Now, this is important because you've got to decide what you know where where we're going to draw the baseline here to decide what the standard is. If you're standard and you've got more than the standard, then you are above average or you're privileged. If you have less than the standard, then you are below the then you're non-privileged or you're underprivileged or deprivileged or something like this. Now, one of course could say that. The privilege is not really the standard, um, and that still could imply that the disabled or the disprivileged, the unprivileged, underprivileged, is not a standard either. Um, but then, then you've sort of made it made any sort of comparison between the two meaningless. You can't really say that this person who is whose limbs don't function and who has a neurological disease that prevents him even from speaking correctly or properly without a uh, scientific assistance, technological assistance, um, is just really no different in any significant way from me. Uh, when he quite patently is significantly different from me. So am I the standard against which his disability is measured? Or is he somehow the standard, and I am in a position of privilege? What is the baseline? What is the standard that we use to measure these things? 
One is either in a deficit or one is in a surplus if we have a standard. <clears throat> so in this case, I would say that uh, that cartoon was only ableist or only, I guess, offensive if we take Stephen Hawking as the standard. There was nothing wrong with him before he was dead, implies the objection to that cartoon. Um, therefore, he's not really, you know, giving him a freshly, you know, a, a new body, I guess, wouldn't really improve him, or, you know, or, or sorry, it wouldn't remove his disability because he doesn't have a disability. He is now privileged if we cure his neurological ailment, or if we had before he died. Um, <clears throat> or is he, again, am I the standard, or just an able-bodied human being? And he is sort of in a deficit. This is important because we have to decide what side of the baseline everybody is on. Are they in a deficit or are they in a privilege? Because if one person is in a privilege because they're above the average or above the mean or perhaps above the standard, the baseline that we all expect, um, anyone who falls below that would be in a deficit. But you can't say that, you see, because that kind of implies that this person is lesser, yada, yada, yada. I, you know, kind of going in circles here, but I think you get it. Um, <clears throat> now, what is implied there? What is implicit in all of that? If I'm in a situation of privilege above other people, and let's assume that we all, all agree in equality, <clears throat> then removing my privilege would actually be the desired result as opposed to raising the disadvantaged person to my level, you see. Instead of trying to fix someone who may have an identifiable deficit, in Hawking's case, he had a body that just didn't work properly or didn't work according to what we consider a normally functioning body. Um, so if he is the standard against which my privilege as an able-bodied person is, is um, measured and we believe in equality, then the best thing to happen, or I shouldn't say the best thing, but an acceptable outcome would be is if I ended up with Stephen Hawking's illness or his all the limitations of his body. Now you think that this is kind of really hair splitting, but I would say no, it isn't. Because <clears throat> the very idea of privilege is attempting to say that merely by having something that someone else doesn't have gives you privilege. Now, who in that scenario is not privileged? We're all privileged in one way or another. There will always be people who are envious of others, always people who are in a deficit, always people who are um, wish that they had stuff that other people have. There will always be people who are, shall we say, to use a really archaic word, handicapped. They have restrictions or impediments placed on them that other people are not subject to. I have a Canadian passport. It lets me go just about anywhere in the world, easily. Uh, if you have a passport from Lesotho or from Bolivia, you're not going to have that same kind of freedom as I do. Now, does that make me privileged, or does that make, make somebody from Lesotho uh, underprivileged. Um, it's got to be, you know, if, if we're going to have a standard here, we've got to decide what that standard actually is. I, I'm of the opinion that if you have if you have a deficit, then that assumes that there's a standard. If you have a privilege, that assumes that there's a standard. Where is that standard? <clears throat> it's not up to everybody else to decide who is in a privilege and who is in a deficit. It's not, you know, we have to just, you, you can't be arbitrary about these things. You have to have some sort of median by which, some sort of agreed upon yardstick by which to define these things. Otherwise, everybody is simultaneously in a deficit and in a position of privilege. <clears throat> and this is important, especially given the egalitarian nature of our society and our thinking even. 
I've gone on record saying that I don't really believe in human equality, but at law, I most certainly do. Uh, I think that we that equality at law must be sort of maintained, even though we know that it's never actually going to reflect real equality. It's just the way that uh, that our laws, that, or the thinking behind them, is to make sure that the gap between the privileged and, and the underprivileged is as narrow as possible, at least legally speaking, because that's not, you know, having a wide gap there is not good for society. But if equality is an end in itself, that's different. <clears throat> if equality is an end in itself, then the best thing, you know, one of, one of two options is to handicap the person who is shown as privileged. Um, the other option is, of course, to raise up the person who is in a deficit, who is disabled or whatever. Um, in the case of white privilege, the implication is that white people have something they shouldn't have because we don't believe in privilege as a society, do we? We don't believe that people should have the cards stacked in their favor. Um, it's not a case of let's raise up the disadvantaged person, in this case I presume non-white people, to the level of white people. It might be a, it's now a case of let's bring him down to our level. Now I understand that there's a lot of people are going to say that no, that's absolute rubbish, that's not the intention of all, but why did then we go from disadvantaged, uh, the marginalized sections of society, why is the discourse now going over to the privileges of the people, not even necessarily at the top? Um, because white people are the majority in the United States, but in the United States, white privilege is talked about all the time. So the privilege of the majority, how, you know, how, how the majority of the population can be in a situation of privilege. Let's say that, you know, you, there's a country that has everybody is white. Um, who is in privilege there? Well, everybody is. Well, okay, that kind of renders the whole idea of privilege and deficit meaningless, right? Because there's no real distinction between anybody. It strikes me as this is kind of the opposite of trying to lift up the disadvantaged. It's not the, it's almost like the thinking is being deliberately pushed in the direction of knocking down the privileged. It's <clears throat> it's all subtle and everything, and a lot of you know, all, virtually anybody I think who, who uses the term white privilege and believes it to be a viable term would probably balk at. They'd probably take offense at what I'm saying. But I, I'm saying, why don't we say that? There are people who are disadvantaged as compared to the standard in Canada. The standard is definitely Caucasian people, but that's changing. Um, we are the standard. Anyone who isn't living up to our, um, up to what we expect out of life is in a deficit. And we, we should correct that as a society. That strikes me as a much more humane way of looking at it than to say, than, than to sort of almost stoke the ressentiment, the Nietzschean sense, um, stoke that with this idea that it's the people that have the privilege that are the problem. It's a, it's a very subtle implication in there, but I believe that when I've seen the term white privilege used, it's always latent in there. It's always latent, uh, the idea that equality should be an end in itself. It's not a means to an end. Um, <clears throat> it becomes an end in itself. What is it that we want out of equality? Well, is, do we want equality because it's equal and equality is just what we want and that's that? Or do we want equality because we don't want, you know, one person gorging on, uh, on, uh, I don't know, gorging on expensive food while another person is bumming for quarters in the gutter? We, you know, uh, equality is a goal, but it's not an end in itself. We want people to be equal so that we won't have to have people uh, sleeping in the streets and begging and uh, dying of cancer untreated and all this sort of thing. Um, <clears throat> it's not that we want everybody to be destitute and um, uh, poor and sick and everything like that, but if equality is the end result sought, 
as an end in itself, then that would work just as well, wouldn't it? This is there's something kind of Ayn Randish about this, where you know socialism is pilloried for being like this, and egalitarianism in general is pilloried like this, uh, you know, just as a process of leveling, uh, you know, as an end in itself. Um, but which I don't think is the original thinking behind all of this. The original thinking be behind socialism was we, we just want to abolish poverty. The idea isn't just to put the screws to the bourgeoisie or whatever, although it did degenerate into that in uh, post, uh, you know, uh, the communist world where the end, end, the sought end was to hunt down and kill or wipe out um, the exploiting classes of society. These were the privileged people. Now this doesn't help the people at the bottom at all. Well, yes, it does help them because humans being humans, we all have that little bit of crab mentality in us and we get a little bit of a you know, we get a bit of a rush when we see the mighty brought down. That's classic ressentiment, right? Um, <clears throat> but in absolute terms, just the fact that you've despoiled the rich doesn't mean that you've made the poor people any better off. I prefer to talk about what we expect to be the standard existence. Now, you can say that what we want is for everybody to have the same experiences in life as everybody else. We also know that this is never going to happen. Well, I shouldn't say never, but uh, given the present realities of you know, humans, human existence, it's not going to happen. What I think we need to do is to, con is to concentrate on fixing the lot of the people who are below standard, who are below what we consider the minimum expectation for human existence. In other words, food, shelter, clothing, medical care, whatever. Um, a lot of stuff in life you have to do yourself. You have to make your. You have to find your own meaning. You have to. Uh, you have to think for yourself. You can't. You know. You you can't just expect everything to. You know. You, you can't expect equality to just happen. It has to be worked at. And you have to take some of the initiative yourself to give yourself a position of equality within society. I think we all agree on that. Equality isn't just something that, you know, you, we, we shouldn't just say that, uh, or I guess, how shall I phrase this? It's not enough just to make sure that everybody is exactly the same as everybody else, because that could mean that everybody is living in abject poverty. What we want is everybody to be at a certain level <clears throat> and beyond that, okay, that's all very well. It's the social safety net as opposed to out and out equality. <clears throat> it's, you know, the social democracy versus Marxism, I guess, where equality was seen as an end in itself, <clears throat> even if it did just degenerate in some quarters to just hunting down and persecuting people who were said to be privileged. Now that's essentially my main objection to the term privilege, because it can very quickly degenerate into that. And it is a way, a subtle way, of putting somebody in a deficit by saying that they are privileged. When you're privileged, it's assumed you have something you shouldn't have, right? Aren't we all egalitarians, after all? So if somebody is privileged, the deck is stacked in their favor, and we want uh, fairness, we want equality. So, um, and that kind of equality is a very mean-spirited equality. It's leveling, as I say, as opposed to attempting to raise the disadvantaged um, we tell ourselves that knocking down the privileged will actually result in equality. Very subtle carp, I suppose, and, and I am kind of carping. I'm sort of being pedantic here and nitpicking. But I would say that these things matter in the same way as, you know, all the sort of Gramscian socialist type 
uh, people would say that, yes, the, the discourse does matter, words matter, when you describe things a certain way, uh, you're, you're implying a certain thing. You know, like the, the cartoon with Stephen Hawking. You're implying that he was less of a man before he died, and now he's a full man because now his spirit, uh, you know, we've all seen the cartoon. Um, <clears throat> is equality an end in itself? I would say no. And if it is an end in itself, then <laughs> I'm not interested in it. I'll put it that way. Um, I want to see to it that the disadvantaged in society are helped in absolute, not just relative terms.